I was gone so long that when I decided to download social media again, I kept looking for Twitter. I was like, where's Twitter? I kept typing it into the app store and it took me so long to figure out that it's called X now because being completely unplugged, I just don't know that I could ever explain like how good it was. I actually have merch coming out. Really, really excited to be back on Patreon. Am trying Cameo. <sighs> Well guys, it seems like the internet is healing. Last week, somebody who might just be one of the most iconic YouTube celebrities returned to the internet after a year-long hiatus. And it is everything that you would expect. 11 days ago, as of recording this, Gabby Hanna, aka the Queen of Bad Vines, aka What If I'm the Monster, returned to YouTube after a year-long social media break. And upon her return, she released a video titled Gabby Hanna Diaries, A Year Without Social Media. And my god, is it a grifty premium saddle on that high horse mess. Now, if you don't know who Gabby Hanna is, then I, I don't even really know where I would start. There is so much lore that follows this woman, it's honestly kind of impressive. I would really not be surprised if she ends up in a history book one day. But to put it very briefly, like in under 30 seconds, like I said, Gabby Hanna blew up on Vine. And like all Viners did somehow, I don't know what they were putting in the water back then, they all managed to have very, very, very successful social media careers. So after Vine shut down, she moved to YouTube full time. And then not too long after that, she started making music. Now this might be my biggest hot take. I don't really think her music is as bad as most people make it out to be. Is it good? No. But it's just very average social media star to musician pipeline music. A lot of people act like it's the worst stuff ever produced, and I just don't think it is. It's just not good. But as a lot of people do, I think that Gabby thought that everything she created was gold. And unlike most people, well, she did not have a period where her friends and family could give her the, oh yeah, that's, that's really good, but I think you should work on this, this, and that. She was already famous when she decided to start releasing music, so of course, when she did, the internet dogpiled her. And from that point forward, her public image started to kind of spiral. A lot of controversies, a lot of drama, a lot of stuff she shouldn't have said, and a lot of stuff she shouldn't have uploaded. But that's the long and short of it. Like I said, there's just way too much to talk about in a single video, because today, we're focusing on her return. Now, Gabby's gonna talk about how she felt this video was necessary because her experience was so positive, but it really just feels like one big out-of-touch marketing scheme. I'll let you be the judge. Let's begin. Please subscribe. Okay, so literally not even a second in, the first thing you see is an advertisement for her new single. Look, if you make music and you have a big social media platform, I'm not saying don't use it, that would be silly, but don't try and pass this off as anything but a big advertisement for your music career. Especially when this song is about what you're talking about in this video. Clearly this is all planned together. I really battled with myself on whether or not I was going to come back to the internet because being completely unplugged, I just don't know that I could ever explain like how good it was, but. I I'm going to uh, do my best to put it into words. The reality is that most people watching this video have no idea what it's like to be completely detached like that because we're not allowed to. All right, this is a silly cope in my opinion. Maybe you and I, Gabby, maybe we're not allowed to unplug because this is our job and we'd have to go get normal jobs if we weren't doing this, which is, you know, that's scary. But most people could unplug from social media if they wanted to. There is no like social contract that says you have to be on social media. One of my best friends from high school had no sort of social media whatsoever and it was never a big deal. Never. The only difference was instead of saying, hey, did you see this on Twitter? I would just start explaining to him what I saw. I think that a lot of people who are on social media constantly forget both that one, a lot of people are on social media a lot less than you think, and two, there's still a huge community of people who aren't on social media at all. TikTok or Instagram or Twitter, which is by the way, the dark web now. When did Twitter become the dark web? Dude, I was gone so long that when I decided to download social media again, I kept looking for Twitter. I was like, where's Twitter? I kept typing it into the app store and it took me so long to figure out that it's called X now. And it makes sense. I feel like it's called X because it's literally X rated. It is the dark web. I've never seen so much and Okay, look, I don't really buy not hearing about Twitter being changed to X, not even in the news or something, but I will concede that it felt like basically overnight Twitter became a completely different website. One day it was just people being completely out of touch with reality and the worst arguments about basketball you've ever heard. And you still have all of that stuff, don't get me wrong, but now you also have videos of people getting shot, and if you click on the comments of that video, it's just three dozen people spreading their asshole wide open. So yeah, it's a little bit different, I'll agree. But first, <laughs> some 
quick plugs. I've been gone for a year, so please indulge me. If you're watching this video, that means my new single, Where Did I Go, is out. Dude, ugh. One of the more challenging aspects of this has been not being able to share music and art as I was creating it. So please go stream that song, watch the little visual that I made, and very, very rare for me up till this point, but will not be rare soon. I actually have merch coming out that I'm so stoked about because I'm very excited to announce that it's coming out through my own design company, Look Design Company. All right, so here's where I feel like the real purpose of this video starts to shine through. What I think is really going on here is that for like three years straight, Gabby Hanna was kind of just the comedic punching bag of the internet, which look, I can understand is probably not a very desirable position to hold. So what this this seems like to me was her just going away for a year to get all the people who are making fun of her to forget about her and then coming back to the people who actually watch her and being like hey I need you to buy all this stuff which look I don't even really think that's that bad of an idea okay despite being a professional internet hater I feel like I keep things pretty fair pretty constructive if you've just been getting dogged on for years and you want to just let people forget about it and then come back quietly I get it some people exist on the internet solely just to hate and not hate in like a funny way but hate in an oh my god you need help kind of way. I can look at who comments on my videos the most and most of my top commenters are just dedicated haters. People who have been coming and leaving like a dozen comments on each video I make for like the last two or three years. Just being miserable. So look I get it. When every single person commenting on your videos is that kind of person, it's pretty understandable. But to try and frame this as this spiritual journey you went on to completely disconnect from social media to then come back and announce like five different things that must have taken months of planning that are all related to social media, it's kind of hard to take seriously. Also on GabbyHannaOfficial.com, you'll find a link to my Patreon. I'm really, really excited to be back on Patreon. I love Patreon. I used to be obsessed with Patreon. I love the community on Patreon. I love having the more exclusive intimate space to share things with a smaller group of people that I wouldn't want to share too too publicly. I love brainstorming there. I love getting feedback there. And I actually have more content prepared for Patreon than I have on my main channel. So if you want blogs, exclusive videos, live streams, and also discount codes for Look Design Company and Cameo, then head over to GabbyHannaOfficial.com and click the members only page. Hmm, I wonder why that could be. This video is beginning to reach dangerous levels of goofy, okay? I feel like I need a hazmat suit. Again, if you just wanted to let the hate kind of die down. Say that. But to paint this as this silly spiritual journey where you completely disconnect from social media and then in the same breath say you have so much content prepared for social media, how do you expect me to take this seriously? You're contradicting yourself with every other sentence. I am trying cameo. I've gotten a lot of requests for it and I realize that so often when I go out and people stop me, they're like, can I get a video for my sister, for my friend? A lot of people just want videos of me saying hello, so I figured I would offer that as a service for people who want it. My sister in Christ, do you see what you look like right now? This is like me saying I'm taking a year-long break from sniffing glue, and then I reveal upon my return to sniffing glue, I guess, that for the last six months of my break, I was sourcing the best glue dealer. I was researching all the best things to sniff. Like, this is not a break. You were never taking a break from social media if you have like four new social medias upon your return. That's like the direct opposite of a break. Literally, the only thing you've managed to do is increase your social media presence. You've made more social media. Sign up for text and email so that you'll be alerted when I actually do do cameos. And they're gonna be really limited. So I'm only gonna be doing like 20 a week, probably, maybe less. So if you wanna be notified when I am actually doing new ones, go ahead and sign up for text and emails. So in this video where you're about to start talking about how not being on your phone for a year and being disconnected has been the best thing you've ever done, you are asking people to sign up for a service that's going to alert their phone that you're doing something that's only available for a limited time on social media that's going to make you money. So basically, you're trying to create FOMO and are telling people to sit around waiting for a text so they can instantly hop on social media for your gain. Oh my god, how out of touch can a person be? Okay, so after this, she just starts talking about the reasons she disconnected, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't really care to talk about them because I don't really buy into any of it. It all feels very performative, so instead we're gonna be jumping 
joking around talking about some of the more silly stuff she said. Could you delete your apps right now and be totally okay with it? Listen, if it don't apply, let it fly. But I know a lot of people are relating, especially digital creators. And no, it's not lost on me. But as a digital creator, as somebody who creates content, who creates music, who creates art, who's creating clothing, who wants you to engage with that, who's relying on ears and eyeballs, how ironic it is for me to tell people they should consume less social media. But that's how important I think it is. Because if I have this valuable information, this amazing life-changing experience, and I don't share it, that's beyond gatekeeping. That is literally evil. Yeah, that's a great sentiment, Gabby, but uh, you didn't, just so you know. I don't know if you forgot everything you said in the 30 minutes it took you to record this, but uh, just as a refresher, the first six minutes of this video was you asking people to go sign up for other social medias. Go check this out on Spotify. Go buy my Patreon. Go sign up for text and email alerts so you can get a cameo. Go look at my website. Go buy my new merch. You are doing the direct opposite of telling people to disconnect. You're asking them to become more connected. This is insane. So if something I'm saying is resonating with you and you feel like you need to delete your apps, God bless you. Godspeed. Go to GabbyHannaOfficial.com and sign up for texts and emails to be alerted when I put out new clothes or new music. Okay, you guys can't see me, but I just did like a sitcom camera stare. If you're a Gabby Hanna fan and you watch her videos, I want you to know that she thinks that you are an idiot. I mean, this is kind of absurd. This is beyond tone deaf. We need a new word. But for the last decade, I've been absolutely drowning in work. It's like that cliche of, you know, you work so hard for the American dream and then you work so hard that you never stop to enjoy it. And like I said, Said it was absolutely incredible. It's a blessing that I would not trade for the world, but I haven't had time to just simply create to create literally since I started YouTube. Everything I did became a grind. I couldn't have a hobby or a passion without finding a way to monetize it because I needed to justify taking the time to do it. All right, so this is the section I'm probably going to end on. Most of the rest of the video is just spirituality and religious talk, and I don't really want to get into that on YouTube, believe it or not. But I actually learned about this whole situation from seeing a video from Cinnamon Toast Kin. Believe it or not, I'm not really keeping up with the whole Gabby Hanna timeline, but I did see that video when I watched it. And during this, he made a very good point. I would recommend you go give his video a watch. But he made a very good point about how creators like this basically self-sabotage and then blame it on YouTube. Or they try to blame it on social media as a whole. They try to monetize every last thing they do because, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars they're making from YouTube is just not quite enough. And then they inevitably burn out. And it's like, duh, you tried to monetize every action because you're greedy. Or you think that people really want to be that involved in your life. Don't give me bullshit about how you can't create to create when every song you release gets put on Spotify. If you want to create to create, don't monetize your stuff. It's not that hard. Imagine how the average person working a real job an actual 9 to 5 feels. How do you think those people feel about not having time to create? Boo hoo, you're a YouTuber who gets to sit at home all day and work less hours than most people and make 10 times what most people make. But no, you're the real victim because you don't have have time to create enough, even though every way you make money is creative. Merch, YouTube, music. No, the people who dedicated their entire childhood to painting, drawing, playing an instrument, singing, who had to throw it all away once real life hit. No, those people aren't the victims, Gabby Hanna, you are. I mean, you really can't get more out of touch than this. Which leads me to my final point, which is something I'm kind of surprised I didn't see anybody talking about in the comments. Gabby Hanna did not take a year off of social media. Sure, maybe she did technically, but what really happened here is Gabby took a year off of work. That's why you're in such a good mood, Gabby. You haven't worked in a year and you're completely fine. Which makes me even angrier about the fact that you're complaining about not having time to create. If 95% of the population took off for a year, they would be homeless and probably dead from starvation. Is it really such a surprise that you're happy, Gabby? You let anybody take off for a year and have enough to survive and do anything they want, yeah, they're probably gonna be a pretty happy camper. Now look, I'm not trying to hold that against you because I'm not one to say that because you've made money you should be ashamed of it or something. But don't come on here and say that you're so happy because you disconnected from social media when your job is social media. There's so much wrong with this video that I could probably keep talking for hours, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna disconnect. Well guys, what do you think? What are your thoughts on Gabby Hanna? I was honestly hoping to kind of be able to go easy on her in this video, but when you have a take this tone deaf, this out of touch, it's really hard for me to take you seriously. People do these kinds of jobs for a decade and they forget that not everybody is doing the same thing as they are. And then you get a video like this.
this. So you heard it here first, folks. If you want to be happy, just don't work for a year and have enough money not only for your basic necessities, but also for all your hobbies and everything you like to do. Bit of a life hack. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye.